Let's take a look at how salinity affects the movement and density of water. Here I have two cups of fresh water, plain tap water straight out of the sink at room temperature. And to my left, I have two solutions. I have a pink solution and I have a blue solution. One of these solutions is salt water and the other is plain tap water or fresh water. And I want you to try and figure out which is which based on what we have learned about density and salinity. So first let's look at how the blue water affects my fresh water. Pay close attention to how the water moves. So what's going on? Does the blue water sink? Does it float? Does it intermix with the existing tap water? What do you think? Now let's see what happens when I add the pink solution to the fresh water. Pay close attention to what you observe. So what's going on there? Is the pink water floating? Is it sinking? Or is it simply mixing with the existing fresh water? What do you think? Now consider which one contains the salt water. Is it the blue solution or is it the pink solution? What do you think? Think about that for a moment and come up with an answer. If you guessed that it was the blue solution, you were correct. Because salt water or salinated water is more dense than fresh water. Because it's more dense, it's sunk to the bottom. Notice that the blue water is mostly at the bottom and you can still see the clear fresh water towards the top. In the pink solution, we added simply fresh water to fresh water. Therefore, they possessed the exact same density. And because they had the same density, they simply intermixed. So you noticed how the pink solution kind of hung out in the fresh water and now it's blending. So they're beginning to mix completely. But in the blue solution, we still have the dense blue water beneath the clear fresh water. So that dense salt water has sunk and my less dense fresh water remains on the top. But in B, we simply added fresh water to fresh water. They possess the exact same density and therefore they combined. Let's take a moment and look at how temperature affects the movement of water. As the sun heats the surface of the ocean, it begins to warm the water. A differentiation or difference in temperature between the surface of the water and the water underneath the surface water um, results in a process known as convection. And that process of convection causes the water to move. And what does that look like? So here I have a little setup. I've got room temperature tap water up here on top, and then I have very, very hot water underneath, heating the center of this pan of water. So I've got some just regular tap water that I've dyed blue, and I'm going to pour it over the center of this model, and I want you to watch closely to what the water does when I do that. What do you notice? So hopefully you see that the water initially pools in that heated area and then very rapidly moves to the surface of the pan and starts moving outwards. And that's the exact same thing that happens in the ocean as the sun heats the surface of the water. So the surface water is warm and the water underneath is colder. And because it's warmer, it's less dense. And as we've learned with salinity, less dense means that it's going to float. So hot water rides the surface of the ocean. 
Also because it's less dense, it moves pretty fast compared to cold water. So the heating of the ocean is one of the many things that results in ocean currents. So the sun heats the surface of the ocean and that creates convection because we have hot or warmer water on top and colder water below. And that warmer water is moving across the surface of the ocean, again, causing ocean currents.